In today's video, I am going to put in the DOD delete kit from Texas Speed. I'm showing you the camshaft right now. And this is all the related pieces that, these are tools actually, uh, related pieces that are going to go, be going into this thing. Lifters, springs, cam, push rods, uh, timing cover, yeah, new, new studs, trunnion kit, yep, yeah. so this is going in. And so it begins today being day one of this DOD delete kit that I am going to be installing. As you may or may not be aware, a lot of stuff has got to come off in order to do that. I mean, to replace the cam, uh, yeah, all the front of the, the engine has got to come off, including the, the rag, the AC condenser, the grill, all of that stuff has got to come off the front. Uh, and then we start taking all the front stuff off, all the top stuff off uh yeah i'm looking forward to doing it but i'm not looking forward to doing it <laughs> on the other hand yeah, this is gonna be a lot of work all right let's begin and so it begins the front is starting to come off i took the grill and the bumper off already started taking the ac condenser out Next thing is the, the red, and then we go from there. Welcome to the jungle, baby. Uh, an update uh, from the front of the engine here. I took off the uh, bumper, I took off the grill, I took the radiator out, and I peeled back the AC condenser somewhat. Uh, yeah, I got access to the front of the engine now. Uh, which is where the cam is going to get pulled out from. Uh, and that's it. Okay. We're going to put an update in here. Um, I started taking all the... Uh, I did all the front accessories except for the water pump. And the uh, crank pulley. Um, let's see. Um, I am starting to take the top half apart. Uh, it's kind of complicated because I you know, changed it all over to that old school look you know I got the wires hidden in the back and you know and all this thing the fake distributor and all of that stuff so it's kind of in a way of taking the intake manifold off so I've got to move all of that stuff out of the way and reroute a few things but yeah it's coming along um, the only thing I noticed that's going to put a hitch in this whole thing is the uh, crank pulley itself Let's see if I can get down there low enough. Um, it's right in line with the, the, the rad support. Uh, I, yeah, I'm not sure if I'll be able to get a puller on there to pull that off. Uh, I haven't gotten to that point yet, so I'm uh, hoping that uh, I don't have to take a notch out of that um, rad support, but we'll worry about it when we get to it, right? All right, time for an update. Uh, I've taken off the water pump off the front. And that's uh, no surprises there. Three bolts on each side and into the head. And I've also taken the intake manifold off and a related fuel lines that goes with it. I got my uh, fake distributor and wires hanging off my uh, hood right now. Until I figure out where I'm going to put them. Um, yeah. And that's uh, also the valve covers are off. So. Yeah. No surprises under there either. No loose rockers or anything like that. Well, it's pretty clean. Alright. At this point, I am up to uh, removing the... Um, crank pulley, dampener, balancer, 
and um, yeah getting this bolt out was mighty difficult this is the stock crank pulley bolt and uh, yeah 240 pounds it's uh, torqued down to from the from the factory and that is the torque value when you tighten it later um, yeah two foot breaker bar and a four foot pipe on the end of that and a lot of arm strength all right here we go gonna take this guy out of here now let me get on this better I got the puller on there pretty good. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> so here we go. Yeah, it's inching its way off of there with this fancy dancy puller that I have. I wish I can put a uh, socket on this, but there's not enough room between the between the core support and the and the crank pulley. So. Last, the last crank pulley I took off was 40 years ago. So, yeah, I'm a little rusty and was on an engine stand at the time, so it made the job a lot easier. And pop goes the weasel. All right, the crank pulley is off. All right, I'm gonna take the valley plate out of here. Slow me down. Something I can't get to. Damn. Damn, Sam. Get this last bolt out of here. Let's see if we can pop this thing. No. 
and out it comes. And these are all the, the DOD oil solenoids um, that basically mess up the whole operation, <laughs> which is why I'm eliminating it. I'm going to put on a smooth valley plate and eliminate all of this. I've seen some guys on YouTube um, grind all of this stuff off and uh, put it back on. I guess it makes sense if you're on a budget. Yeah. That's what it looks like inside. You can barely see the cam down the bottom there. But what you can see on an LS is you can't see lifters, which you would normally be able to see in a small block um, yeah oh on all of these little holes at the top here um, I will be putting plugs in there to close them off so that they have no uh, oil starvation so yeah and I gotta find a new location for my uh, oil oil pressure switch because um, uh, the new valley plate uh, eliminates that so it's just a smooth cover and no bung in the back for the oil oil pressure alrighty uh, this is the uh, valley plate that goes on in place of the uh, the other one um, it's it's baffled underneath so um, yeah and it's got a little o-ring supposed to seal off those um, those holes at the top um, there's the uh, the bung for the PCV system yeah it's a beautiful unit that low car provided for me and uh, it'll be going on at the end of this project when I get to that point I have taken the uh, the rocker uh, assembly out of here. Um, I didn't get the push rods. Yeah. I'm about to lift the cylinder head off on the passenger side. And I'm going to go well, one of one of two ways. <laughs> Either I'm going to lift it off, and everything is going to be fine, or I'm going to struggle real bad and drop it back down on the engine. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll see how this goes. Yeah. Hung up on a gasket. There we go. Not too bad. Well, there she is in all her glory. I have taken the passenger side head off. And that's what it looks like currently. Well, I'm concerned about the either carbon or oil on top of the pistons and also on the uh, combustion chamber inside the cylinder head. I looked at that briefly, but uh, yeah, I'm a little concerned about that. Um, here's the passenger side head out of the car. Uh, I'm no LS expert by any means, but it looks like there's a lot of oil in there. 
You can let me know in the comment section below what you think of the condition of the combustion chamber here. Yeah. There was some oil in the intake manifold also. So I'm a little concerned about that. And we'll have to look into it further. I've just removed the driver's side head. Uh, no surprises here. Um, pretty much the same as the, the passenger side. Uh, carbon slash oil slime buildup uh, on the back side of the head. Uh, there was a little, uh, little more actually on the on the driver's side head. As you can tell with the two of them side by side, they're pretty pretty much the same. I mean, I'm not going to nitpick here, but yeah. Uh, what I'm going to do now is remove the, uh, the lifters. And yeah, take the lifter trays out right now. <laughs> yeah, it'd be helpful if I grabbed the right socket. All right, I think I got the right one this time. Only the DOD lifters come out with the tray. The others two stay down in, inside the bore. So, yeah, that's DOD. And here's the other one in the back. There we go. That's the DOD lifters. They have a they have a spring on top. Um, I don't know if I can do this one-handed, but see if I can take one of these guys out. There we go. So as you can see, it's got this big spring on the end, and that's the that's the failing point basically for this uh, oh, DOD thing. The lifter gets all either stuck closed or stuck open, and yep, that's a problem. At this point, I want to remove the the, the timing cover. Let's see what it uh, looks like underneath there. Um, let me grab my gun here. Now we got two bolts underneath uh, coming from the oil pan into the timing cover. And that has been uh, removed already. Those two bolts. Okay. Let's see where I can pry from. Oh, 
hung up somewhere. <laughs> I know what's hanging it up. A little pin gasket. Which I have successfully torn. Hmm. At this point, I have taken off the timing cover off the front. And just to show how complicated all of this is under there on the top is the the cam of course and the cam gear uh and that's what they call the phaser in the front it's basically variable timing uh, down the bottom is the crankshaft and surrounding the outside of that is the oil pump so i gotta remove all of this because i've got a new oil pump and a new cam new cam gear eliminating the phaser I wanted to include this step because I thought it was important. I'm replacing uh, the the oil pump, uh, but um, there's a little there's a 10 millimeter bolt that attaches to the pickup tube, and with the oil pan up, you know, flush with the block, it's kind of hard to get to that uh, that little 10 bolt. And other people have successfully got it out of there, uh, but I thought it was. Uh, I was kind of fearful that that bolt would, if I did get it out, it would drop into the pan. I did put a rag in here just in case it did, but I, I lowered the pan. Uh, I dropped, I took all the bolts out of the uh, oil pan and and um, separated it from the block, and and it came down, you know, a couple of inches in the front, and that, you know, that gave me the room I needed to to get that, you know, to get that all out. Uh, the rest is just uh, back out these bolts. And remove the oil pump, but it's uh, it's not, it's not a good it's not a very good design for the um, uh, the oil pump pickup, which is which is attached at the bottom of the oil pump. Uh, the pickup tube uh, has an O-ring on it too, and I'm going to have to replace that. But it, at least it'll be easy to get to. And this should just slide right off of there. But it's still connected to the oil pickup tube at the bottom. Maybe you can see better than me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There we go. There's the old one. That's not actually bad. It's in pretty good shape. So, I think I will use that. Okay, then here's the old pump, which I am replacing. This is the front of the engine with the uh, timing. Um, chain removed and also the oil pump on the lower pulley removed and also the uh, phaser which is the VVT valve um, valve well, with a variable valve timing um, gear on the top where the cam is this being this being the cam right here so next to come off is the retaining plate and the uh, the, the little dampener that goes around the uh, the chain I'm replacing those bolt items. Okay, the moment we've been all been waiting for, the cam removal. Now, hopefully, I have enough room in the front here through this rad support that I don't bump in the AC condenser because I'm I don't have enough room. Am I blocking your view? Hmm. Oh well. We want to fling this thing on the way out. Out like that.
Here she comes. Mm-hmm. Very little room here. And it just makes it. Well, there it is. It's out. Okay, the cam is out. Everything has been removed from the front of the engine. Yeah, let's look inside the crank channel. Can you see in there? Does it look good all the way to the back? Sure. Back at it again today. I wanted to show you a little close up here. Uh, these are uh, oil ports that I have driven uh, steel plugs into. Um, it's not required with this uh, valley plate uh, replacement that I'm I am doing. Uh, the low car uh, valley plate. Uh, comes with uh, uh, gaskets, uh, O-rings, actually, that go around here. But I thought putting the plugs in would definitely seal off those uh, oil ports and uh, there would be no leakage. Um, the only one I didn't seal up was the oil port, I mean, the oil pressure sensor port in the back. I did not uh, put a plug in there. I'm relying on the valley plate rings to seal off that and this is a, a view of the bottom of the uh, valley plate the new low carpet valley plate as you can see it's got o rings there for all eight of those oil ports as well as a o ring around the back and this is the uh, this is the oil port here um, Debating it whether I should put some sealant on there. It's the only one I haven't completely sealed off But we'll cross that path when we get to it, which might be now Okay, and over here we have the new Low car valley plate that I just put in as you can see it's held down by about ten different screws over here and uh, unlike Unlike uh, putting the intake manifold down where I snapped off one of the bolts inside the, the cylinder head uh, In low car if you're watching this video, I did not have a disaster moment with these everything was uh, Was good here, and uh, it's a beautiful piece low car uh, did well with this um, And thank you for uh, providing this beautiful piece of aluminum for me And that's it Not a moment we've been waiting for. The cam is going in. Hopefully successfully. I gotta get past that. Screwdriver at the end of this thing. 
give you some more length. That's what she said. And now that the cam is in, what we got to do is stick the, the cam sprocket on the front with the three new bolts. And, well, first we got to put the retaining plate on. Um, and then, yeah. And then the uh, sprocket, three bolts. Timing chain. Yeah. That's another procedure. Next thing I'm going to put on is this cam retaining plate. Which has uh, there we go. Has four recessed bolts. In the front, there are T40 torques. I'm just going to zip them in a little. Final torque is 18, which I have it set for already on my torque wrench. Okay, that's on. The next thing to go on is the cam sprocket, which I have right here. And as you can see, this is the timing mark on the bottom, which I have put uh, white paint on so I can see it more easily. And down on the crank is also a timing mark, which you can barely see at the end of the thing here. Um, I have put white paint on that also so that I can see it more easily. Now the next task is to line the two marks up exactly like that, right above each other, and hopefully and I'll be able to do that. One, two, three. Now I gotta line up the dowel pin on the back. I 
think that was it. No. This is certainly boring video for you guys. That's a real pain in the ass, that is. After much struggling to get the Dow pin lined up, I finally got them uh, all lined up. My marks all lined up vertically. Uh, the cam uh, sprocket bolts have been uh, torqued down to spec, which is 25 pounds, 26 pounds. And uh, yeah, I'm not concerned, but there, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of slack in the, in the timing chain. I'm not sure if that's uh, normal or not, um, but, what, but from what I'm reading and seeing on uh, the old YouTube, um, yes, that's acceptable. So we're going to go with that. This is the LS2 damper here in the middle, replacing the uh, tensioner. Hey guys, uh, I think it's a good time uh, to uh, pause this video uh, at this time and uh, I can get to uh, part two uh, coming up. It's getting a little long, this uh, front video here. Um, and uh, you will see uh, reassembling uh, this whole setup here, uh, putting on the, um, uh, the heads and, and all of that stuff. Uh, so stay tuned for uh, part two. Uh, I will thank you for joining me on this video on part one of this DOD delete uh, setup here and uh, I welcome you to uh, subscribe if you feel that this video has been helpful uh, it is not a how-to video uh, do not uh, under, uh, see this as any way of uh, how to do the job for yourself um, so um, yeah join me for part two and uh, thank you for uh, joining me on this part one